All right, guys, go to Boy 32 here. Check it out, man. I'm out here at the range today. It's one of my favorite places. But uh, one of the deals I wanted to do was go ahead and zero in these iron sights. Now, let me just explain something to you. This is one of my absolute favorite rifles. I think this was, oh, I don't know which one this is. But <laughs> anyway, I, it did have the uh, Yankee Hill machine. Now, these are the, uh, the gas block that's incorporated with the uh, pop-up... Uh, iron sights here front and back now these are their steel iron sights and i like these things because they are extremely rugged but i've never taken the opportunity to go ahead and zero those things in and this actually gave me a, a great opportunity to show you the reasons why what when where and how in zeroing iron sights now they're zeroing iron sights a lot of people think it's difficult it's really not there's a lot of different things that you want to keep in mind when you're doing this one is uh, a bore sight, a good bore sight is good to do prior to going to the range, and that's pretty easy to do, and we'll go ahead and explain it to you here in a few minutes. But secondly, the adjustments. Once you get the bore sight on there, it's, it's quite simple. Now, here's another thing. A lot of people like to, this is a 25 meter or 25 yard setup for uh, Battle Sight Zero. Now, this is a really good deal to use in the event that you only have 25 yards to work with. If you have 50 yards to work with, go ahead and do your Battle Sight Zero at 50 yards. And I'll tell you the reason why. The differential in the rise and the fall of the round is very high when you go at the 25 yard. Now, when we were in the military, this is what we used because it comes back on zero at 300 yards. Now, this is based on a, at that time, I think a, a carbine or a 20 inch barrel with a, uh, using a 5.56, 55 grain. Now, what I'm using today is just the 223 Remington. This is a DPMS one and eight twist barrel. This thing right here is a sub MOA barrel. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and set a target down range at 50 yards. We're gonna go through the adjustments and show you how easy it is. Very simple, very easy. But a lot of people neglect setting up their iron sights. Here we go. All right, guys, so what we're going to do, there's a 50-yard line right here. Now, this is approximately about an inch and a half. This is a, and the reason I shoot, and again, let's back it up. The reason I go with the 50 yards is because that's as reasonably as far as I'm going to be able to see and pinpoint with a open sights, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring this thing in. We're going to test it out. I went ahead and bore sighted it in back at the Hacienda. And I'm going to show you guys real quickly how I bore sight stuff in. Very simple, very easy, but it eliminates guys out here at the range shooting their four feet off. And I'll be honest with you, that's happened to me. So through experience, I've been able to eliminate that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and hit this thing up, see how close we can get. Stay by. All right, guys. So what we're talking about when we talk about bore sighting an AR, pretty simple. In any rifle, you've got the sight differential from the top of your sight right here down to the center line of the bore. Now that's approximately two and a half inches on this particular rifle. So what I do is I take about 10 or 15 feet in a room and I will put this upper in a clamp. And then what I'll do is I actually bore sight it in down to two different dots. One dot is gonna have the little, where the bore is, and then I'll measure up two and a half inches. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to line these signs, sights up with the bore. Now what that's going to do is it's going to put me approximately, I'd say two and a half inches, three inches below where my bullseye is down at the target. Now I don't know where it's going to line up on the horizontal end of things, but we'll see. Now the goal is here, we're going to get the front sight post set and we're going to get the rear sight set and we'll see where we are. So from there, let's load her up. See how we do. Here we go. Now, one of the things that doesn't do me very good is I am blind as a bat. I can't see a damn thing. So it's very helpful to just take your time and that's one of the reasons why that 50 yard line is about as far out as I can go. Anything other than that, if I'm shooting with the iron sights, it's gonna be a 24 by 36 inch figure. So for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and load up three more, set them down range and see how they do.
All right, we'll go around down there and see how we did real quick. For your curiosity, this particular uh, rifle right here has the Geisley SSA enhanced uh, trigger. We're running just a Palmetto State Armory premium bolt. One of these days, we're going to do a video. People like to go with those nickel boron bolts. Not bad, but uh, not necessary. So anyway, as soon as we get a chance, clear the range here in a couple minutes, we'll go ahead in there, check it out, see what adjustments we need to make to bring this thing on. All right, so what we can see here, not a bad little group right here. One, two, three, four, five. Well, may have two in the same hole. But anyway, what I want to do is I'm going to bring it left. And I think these sights are set up for one inch MOA per click. And we want to come up about three. So let's see if we can bring this thing on real quick. And uh, that's how easy it is, I think. <laughs> Till we hit the uh, damn tripod with the camera on it. <laughs> here we go. All right, so here we go, man. We're going to go ahead and adjust this thing. That says to the right. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Then what I want to do, I want to go up. One of the coolest little things is this little tool right here. Now, this is a Leaper's UTG or I don't know, one of those guys out there, but a nice adjustment tool. But it makes it so easy to go ahead and adjust your front sight post. If I can get it in there. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to All right. I don't know where that's got me now, but we'll find out here real quickly, won't we? <laughs> huh. Here we go. see how we did all right so we made some adjustments up and to the left i need to come i'd say two more clicks to the left and i'm gonna take it back down one and let's see how where she ends up there okay here we go stand by all right so we're back so what i wanted to do is i want to come two clicks to the left two all right and then i want to probably i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna take it down I don't know. What do you think? One more notch down. Come back. I think we should. One back. Down. Come on, baby. All right. Okay. So we took it down one notch, left two notches, put three rounds in it. See how we go. <laughs> All right, that should put us right on where we need to be. Once we get that done, we won't touch these things again. Put a nice little scope on this upper and we're good to go. Stand by. All right, well, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Right there. That's a good battle sight zero. And it was fairly easy to do. How many rounds we have? Verified zero, the bore. Five, five, six rounds there. Nine, 12 rounds. I've seen guys out here at the range go through an entire box of ammo trying to figure out how to zero the rifle in. Guys, it's a very simple process. Up, down, left, right. Know what the adjustments are. These were one MOA per click. That's one inch at 100 yards, half inch at 50. That's not bad. I'm pretty cool with that. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about the principles of this Battle Site Zero in our next video.
Let's go to Boy 32. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. Go to Boy 32. Out.